Okay, so first off, thank you to everyone who uh, joined me on this challenge making a rock face. It's great fun seeing what people put together. As promised, I'm going to show you the breakdown and I'm also going to show you a simple recipe versus a more complex recipe that I use to build this variant here where um, this is the one that I actually posted where it's got you know a little bit of darker chunks there's a lot of deeper roughness and cracks and fissures in it that just go above and beyond so let's start off with a simple recipe a simple recipe starts off with some Voronoi two types of Voronoi of course and it's really not that uh, overall elaborate so I went in and uh, brought the scale all the way up to the top and I adjusted this, um, these two scales, so um, 0 0.08 and that just basically lengthens it, it pulls it upwards. And then pulling this one over, um, 3.69 uh, is squishing it inwards. So we're getting these long lines, but you see how there's a little bit of kind of overlap, right? And it's in between, and that's something that's an important factor in this. Our other Voronoi is a different type. So this one is the uh, S type, and this one is the C type. And so this is raised shapes, right? And again, I uh, went with something um, that's a little bit compressed and a lot expanded. Uh, these shapes by default are a little bit larger, so I had to adjust the settings differently. And I wanted variation anyway, so um, they also have a different seed, I believe. Um, that one's 347, and this one's 1239. And uh, just combining them uh, within a balance that I felt was appropriate. So it's a little bit off from uh, 50, it's like 41%, uh, favoring um, a shape that I thought was a good starting point. Now, um, before I get into the, uh, the rest of the simple recipe, there is one factor that I have to do, and this is an essential ingredient in helping with those overlapping shapes and really sort of defining it. And that is taking a gradient and uh, combining it with this. So I'm not going to be using this a heck of a lot. Um, I've brought it up to 88%. It's set to screen, uh, combining these two together. And it, it, uh, it does tend to flatten a little bit at the top. So I do lose a little bit of the volume. But that's OK. And I run it through an erosion. So the erosion is what's giving me um, some of these additional shapes. The lines flow down and you know they bounce around and, and uh, move in and out. So if I wanted to go uh, this far and go with the easy recipe, I would do as I've done in various other videos, output the wear. And I, in this particular case, because these are set to very low influence, right? So they're not super tall. I've brought in a constant to lift the whole thing up. So I blended those together and I went, you know, 50% um, just to reduce the, the height of some of this as well again. So I'm getting half of that and getting a little bit of additional depth for the subtraction that I'm about to do, which is just subtracting the wear. So subtracting the wear is going to give me all those lovely grooves, really deep, maintaining um, some of the surface uh, unevenness, right? The little cracks, um, different uh, heights, some some little peaks, etc. Then um, at two K here, uh, I go through a full strength stratify. The stratify is going to give me these little broken up blocks here, which add great texture. And I combine those, fifty percent. So what you see is all that breakage in there. It gives a nice textural feel to the surface. And the next essential ingredient 
is to get those angles in there and get them sharpened up. And so that's going with a recurve, setting the scale all the way down to one. Then just simply combining them, 50%. And there it is. Nice, lovely rock pattern. that you can work with. So that would be a relatively simple rock pattern overall. I decided to go a little bit different with it the first time around. So this is refinement after the fact, after acknowledging you know, what are the key elements that make this shape. That's the base form. If, um, if I'm honest, I just kind of played around first, just trying different things, and I got some nice results from it. So. Um, what I'm doing here is going back to that gradient and that erosion and rather than just pulling out the wear and making use of that which I, I do use um, but I use it in inclusion to this erosion so I take the erosion and I run an aperture on it and I've gone with the contract what the contract is doing is it's sharpening everything so I get these sharper little edges in there and then from that, I'm going and gouging the uh, bits deeper. So what this has given me is much sharper ridges that I'll make use of. It also takes care of some of the, uh, the loss of detail um, that was there as well. Taking this whole thing, I'm combining it back with this to uh, get a difference, 100%. So this is that, you know, base form. Uh, what I'm getting from this now is the peaks that I got from that and the gouges that I got from that, everything else is being eliminated. So it's just leaving the wear. So it's, it is somewhat similar to this. Uh, if I were to go ahead and maybe do an aperture to this, I'd get stronger peaks and I would get that, that wear that's going on. So it's very similar, but not exactly. So I end up with this and of course it's, inversed because that's what I'm getting from this when I, when I do it. So I'm getting the, the reverse version of essentially that minus the peaks. So naturally I'm going to take a constant and I'm going to subtract it from that. So let's look at the difference there. So you can see the stronger peaks, the sharper forms, very, very close. So I take this and I get a little bit extra crazy. So I've got two variants here that I'm gonna be combining back down through. I often do this to reinforce certain details that I like. So I wanted some of these, you know, uh, broken up shapes a little bit further. So I brought in a little bit of them with just a pure blend, 31% to favor the original shape. So it's just boosting a little bit of variation in height to break it up a little bit further. Uh, in this variant, I actually used it as a subtraction. And so now I'm cutting into the force uh, and a little bit deeper and then I'm taking that and running a displace on it. A very strong displace, 20%, six iterations, and I did a rotation of 45 degrees so it goes straight across. A little caveat to that is that the corners often straighten out so they go in the opposite direction. I'm not sure why it does that because if I do it straight down, they all go straight down, but there's something going on with the corners. Not a big deal in this case, very little of this is coming through. It's actually just to add some sort of surface noise with directional intention, um, scraping sort of. So we're going from this and we're adding that um, scraping effect to it. And you can see how that works. So you can see some directional elements to that. So it's just uh, about 30%, it's 29 there. I'm also taking this displaced variant and I'm running a fold on it. 
Uh, I like the, the shapes that are there, but I want a variation on those. So this gives me um, a combination of some of that and add some warping to it. And I'll bring that back in uh, in a different way in a moment. Um, so I'm sending it off to a stratify, just like I, did, like I did with the other one. But this gives me, you know, some variant forms there. So uh, meanwhile, back up to this one. This is the one that we just textured with that that noise. I'm going to terrace it, and the terracing goes in and it flattens some of the regions here, uh, leaving some of the peaks. You can see the settings. I think they're actually the defaults. So I don't think I changed them. And then uh, the other one is using the stratify full strength, which gives that little breakup that I was talking about before. So very similar to this step here, but you can see there is difference. There is distinct difference. So when combining those two together, I get this. So it has some of those directional intent there. It's got a flatter surface and it's got little, you know, breakups here and there. Combining it with that, uh, that noise that's been adjusted and you get even more shelving. So you can see this interesting sort of breakup. Um, areas are getting pushed down in, areas are being lifted back up again and you're getting a lot more variation off that surface. So now it's time to tilt. And in order to tilt that, we go ahead and do a recurve. The difference with the recurve coming off this step is I get a lot more of this sort of chipping shape, this rock breakage kind of um, idea. So that when I combine it back in, and I'm doing it at about 75% here, when the stuff comes back into it, it looks very much like um, cracked sort of flint. I add a breaker note to that. And that just adds a few additional cracks and fissures. And then I'm doing a cracks node. Fair bit of depth, adjusting the scale, and of course, adjusting these to lengthen them as well. These are a bit too straight, so obviously I'm going to do a displace to that. Um, it's rugged, just like always. It's, um, a bit of a stronger um, type of deformation overall, so that's why I often will use it. It gives me a nice roughness to this. Other than that, I don't think I really changed anything. I think the rest of it is all the same. I run an apex on that. And the reason why I ran the apex is because it's going to isolate some. Some cracks are going to be a little bit shallower. Some are going to be a bit steeper. And it does that based off of sort of the thickness that's there. So I get some more variation. It's not all perfectly even. So with this, we get that um, deeper rock breakage kind of look, right? Uh, big gouge, something's been, you know, falling out of that hole. Uh, cracks all over the place and uh, we've got uh, this which is um, being combined back in as a sort of max feature and uh, what this is doing is uh, with the clamp I've just brought it down a little bit So what that's done is it's created sort of a little shelf in there as opposed to a deep hole. And it's just to, it's, it's personal choice. Honestly, you don't have to do that. You could just stick with this if you wanted. So now it's on to texture. Did a soil, of course. It's kind of the primary thing that you want to do. And as usual, I either plug another uh, soil or texture in there to get finer details. So in this particular case, I went with the texture. And I run sat maps through both of them. So one sat map through the soil gave us something that um, I felt uh, showed off the edges fairly well. 
another one which offered a lot of rough spotty detail because remember what the goal is here is so that when I'm doing this one I'm looking for more detail from it and so this one provided me lots of tiny little details uh, sort of a speckled pattern that was neat to add to that textural sense with this isolating those those edges combining them together and then um, favoring the the edges more than the detail so just bringing it down to 29 percent here so that those those dots added texture but mostly it was about the uh, the edges now this is too dark for me for a cliff anyways so of course I went through a color adjustment here and uh, just brightened it up so that was um, where is it brightness contrast so I adjusted that to make it brighter I also decided that um, this was actually not too bad to deliver a little bit of this into my um, texture to give a few areas that are maybe a bit sooty or maybe a different kind of rock um, just to break it up so I went and did a slope and adjusted it to isolate some little um, areas using that to pull that that dirt back in we get this So it kind of enhances some of the the cracking and breakup on that surface it looks a little bit you know dirty and it's not everywhere it's in certain regions so it adds to the breakup of the surface and then just for fun i decided to um, take this information and combine it with some uh, green texturing coming off the texture it has variation it's coming off this texture one here and just combining them together we get something like this and this is sort of like the you know the the bit of mossiness in the grooves a little bit of staining and I've used an occlusion to isolate the areas that I want that to happen so it just goes from this and gives a little bit of um, subtle greening in those grooves where that would be most likely to uh, to grow and that's basically it that is the rock face hopefully you got something from that um, remember you can always pause and go back and sort of step through it there's the easy version and then you can skip to the end and go for the texture or you can go for the more complex version or come up with your own variation now that you know the main ingredients so that's it for me i'll see you in the next video